Hello and welcome to the 2023 Music City Open presented by Lone Star Disc. This is a Music City Disc Golf event here in Nashville, Tennessee. We got the uh, Age Protected Amateur Visions playing today and Derek Green with me here on the uh, mic. How y'all doing today? So Derek, you're on this featured card with uh, Dan Mountain Man Sis, Jeff Casalina, and Kurt Trevina. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a car I was looking forward to. I've never played with any of these guys before, but definitely had heard their names before, so. But here we go in hole one. As you can tell, it was just a uh, you know, straight drone uh, flight through here, but the woods on the right are a little bit more thicker. It's definitely a place where you want to be missing left more than right. It just opens up a little bit better on that left side. Dan leads us off with the early tree kick. Yeah, last year we had Jeff and Kurt on uh, on coverage for this event. I think we had Kurt to have a throw in, so I was telling him we need another throw in from him. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is um, only my first time playing this course actually, so uh, I just got one practice round in yesterday. So got a little tee off music for us. It's definitely a, uh, there's a few holes out here as uh, we'll get into the round where shot placement is key, but man, you piped this one right here. I did that. That felt really good coming out the hand. Next up is Jeff from Team Dynamic Disc. Hole one played a half a stroke over par, and that's a, that's a trend we'll see quite a bit here for these first few holes. Is they're they're either tight or they're just really long. Yeah, some definitely some tricky holes to get started on on this course. Kurt from Team Lone Star Disc coming up from Texas. Like I said, we had him last year. Um, we were joking with him about trying to get another throw in. I even told all the guys, uh, dinner's on the house if we can get an ace on film this for this this uh, course because this course is a tough one, but there's opportunities out there. I have to say, I pointed out a uh, Kirk shirt, pretty pretty sweet little armadillo shirt. Looks like everybody got about halfway down the fairway here besides I had one good shot. We'll see how playing out here so dan he's uh pdj has got him coming from clover south carolina but he is a local legend he kind of helped really get this golf going in the area um i believe this was his first time on coverage but we're we're happy to get him on here and uh i know the music city folks appreciate getting the getting dan on coverage Yeah, my first time meeting him, I actually spoke to him a little bit. He said this was uh, his first time signing back up for the PDJ in two years. So he was looking forward to getting back out there and getting into the swing of things. Jeff with a long circle two bit here. Oh, just a little long. We were out at this event last year and uh, it was it was the first time we filmed the MP40 division, and, and we really enjoyed it. We we're happy to be back. Uh, and I, I think it opened up opportunities. Like we we were able to get the Bud Hill, and just so getting master divisions on camera is something that we're proud to do and happy to do. And and like the skill level that we'll see this weekend, uh, you you won't be able to tell what divisions being played. You know. These guys could be competing at MPO at any at any event, in my opinion. Especially you. We've had you on camera before. Yeah. Several times. Gave that a great bid from just outside circle. 
initial C of the day. Oh, we finally made it to your drive? Finally made it there. Jeff actually told me this was the best drive he'd ever seen on hole one. And man, I was, felt good to put that one in, man, right after he told me that. Kirk with a nice clean up there. Did you guys get together and uh, come up with a color pattern for, for a round one shirt I do this year? Uh huh. Well, I swear, blue and greens. <laughs> Besides I Dan, I didn't even notice that till now. It's funny. Definitely looks like it. You'll card the uh, birdie on the hole, and that was just one of four. Definitely strokes on folks, as they would say. Yeah, it definitely felt good to get that first one out there. Welcome to Music City Disc Golf. We are a 501c3 nonprofit public charity here in Nashville, Tennessee. We strive on including men, women, juniors, and providing competition for all skill levels. We would like you to come be a part of Music City Disc Golf. Yeah, so heading in the hole two here, really long two, or 732, excuse me, part four. Road will be down the whole left side and pretty much like natural will be down that right side with how thick it is and how far up hill you have to get out of there to uh, get to the pin. It's definitely a shot where you just, you want to keep it in the middle and uh, probably play it safe until you can get around those first group of trees that are on the right. Yeah, the wind was a little swirly today too. I think we had, a, it was mostly a right to left but it was also a little heady coming in there, so let's swear a little on here. My goal here was to just throw it down, miss that tree, and stay inside of the sidewalk. And as you can tell, it got close. I mean, you dialed it to perfection. You're gonna have good footing over there. You get you get close to the road, you can be rewarded with uh, more flat ground. Yeah, for sure. Th those groups of trees that you kind of went around there, they, uh, they're right in just about everybody's landing area. And then there's a little culvert down there too. That can make a second shot tough to get up and down for a birdie here. Definitely a hole with the distance and the elevation that once you're out of position, you're just trying to save your par. And that headwind definitely making itself known. You can see the trees and Jeff probably trying to throw the kind of the same line you had. Let the uh, let the wind hold that disc over. Just got underneath it. It looks like it looked like he had a little turned over. I was in the wind did not benefit him at all. This tee, you know, shooting off to the left, it's it's really facing left of even the basket, so towards the OB, that forces it in the head that you need to throw a turnover, and then when he, or an understable disc, and then again, we see it here. You know, you think, you try to do that, and a headwind, that this is just gonna dope right. Yeah, get that angle exposed, and wind takes over. So here, let's see if Dan makes a correction on the last two throws, and stays out of them woods. I was on a catch cam for this. I did not see, but that looks like a sweet custom hand on stamp get or out, something he's got going on there. I couldn't tell Dan's disc, but I was looking at him, and I think some of them might have been older than me. Oh, man. He, he, <laughs> well, he piped that drive, and it's like the wind just didn't help him. Like, if wind dumped over the first, those second two, and did the opposite to his yeah and as you can see over here on this right side we were talking about the natural ob like it's there's nothing clear out of here it makes it very for a very tough up shot for your second shot yeah early right you know you're probably still with the uphill probably 500 out yeah and you know you're not getting you're, the standstill throw just scrambling for par now Good out by Kirk there. Now he's got a open shot for his second shot. Or for his third shot, my bad. Both these fellas had one of those take your medicines kind of mindset here, which is I mean, like there's all that's all you can do really. Especially when you get into that on the right side. 
See if Jeff can get it. I didn't measure it, but I bet that culvert's just under halfway or just right around it. No, I mean, you got that one just a little turned over there. Maybe the wind had something to do with that. Here we go, Kirk. I want to point something out about Kirk because this was my first time playing with him. But if you look when he throws a driver, look at the way he grips the disc. Most unique thing I've ever seen. Look how he puts that first finger over top of his thumb. What we call him, this the knuckler? Yeah, he calls it. Oh, does he? Does he? How did he know that? It's the most interesting thing I've ever seen with someone throwing a disc. And he does it only does it on his drivers. I didn't even notice that last year, but I wasn't. Yeah. So here we go, Dan, with after his OB drive, trying to get up there to save his par. What are you throwing here when you're throwing like uh, when you're throwing against the hill? You throw an understable or overstable, like because if you feel like you're gonna fall backwards, so you're gonna turn it over. Yeah, so going uphill for sure, more like that. I'm gonna throw understable, so it's getting up the hill and still fighting the turn. Yeah. Um, as you can see, though, I'm I got up a little bit more flat. Yeah, you had flatter ground. I'm I'm just wondering, like maybe that's something that could have affected Jeff or Kurt. Yeah. You know if you. Definitely going uphill is definitely throwing something a little bit more understable. Here I got a little more flatter, so I'm throwing something more overstable. I like it. And man, the wind was even still lifted it. Yeah. Yeah. It looked really good, and then just oh, wind bounce right there at the east. Stayed in bounds. So now Jeff's throwing four. He got out, and then the, that wind got him back into it. He's probably about 100 feet or less. Maybe a little less, but still uphill and through all this. Yeah, he still had to fight it out. Yeah, there's still some work in there to do. That OB is, I mean, the OB is really not close at all, but like as you can tell with your disc, the, the wind holds anything up. You could you could be there quick. Yeah, and, and there's a slope behind the basket, so that makes it look like it's getting there even quicker. Get over there. I think Dan just turned that just a little bit out of his hand. So. Oh, here we go. Kirk tried to save this par. Just a little. Good I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't short. It had a chance. Yep. Ah, yeah. That's a great putt. Flew back. There we go. Getting it going. Good start to the round. Hole two played uh, 0.65 over par, but there were a few more birdies on it than hole one here. This is the uh, longest hole on the course. Once, once you get out of here or out of this open area, it's, you're pretty much in the woods the whole time. Besides maybe one or two holes on the backside. And, and even then, there's still gaps that he got ahead. So yeah, your first time at this property, Cane Ridge here. This is on the south side of Nashville, kind of just out of town, down the interstate a little bit. Uh, not too far from Mill Ridge, where just a few weeks ago they had the Elite Series event. Yeah, I didn't actually notice it until last night. Look at the maps, how actually close that course was. So, yeah, so moving into hole three, 596. Uh, this course is definitely different than the No Ridge, as you can tell here, with like how wooded it is. This is the second, I think, the second longest hole on the course. And it's, uh, you know, pretty much get to this landing zone down on the left. The further you can get past that ditch, the better you're going to be to be able to have an angle towards the basket. Otherwise, you're just throwing those up. 
to get up that hill. But, uh, pardon. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Definitely want to get out of that ditch for the footing. The footing in there is rough. I think it's, I mean, I really like this. It's, it's a almost 600 feet and it's all woods. And so it's got a, you know, you hate to compare it, but it's got that Northwoods black vibe to it. And, and this course has been around a lot longer. I'm actually in town with some buddies and I have a couple of am buddies and they said exactly Northwood vibes. And I said, yep, besides the fairways are a little bit more beat in and we've got the more defined shots that you can throw here. See, I made it to the ditch on my drive. We'll see what Jeff does here. It looks like you're a great turn yeah. on it. Yeah, a little bit flatter ground, so he'll be coming in more more off to the right, and you had that kick left, but it looked like you stayed away from the trees. Again, those two trees on the right, that one that's laying and the one next to it, like really forces you to throw out to the left, but then like, the trees on the left, they come up quick. You have to you have to get something on forehand or something that's turning without turning it over. And and even in the woods, like the wind can be an issue in here. Just a little off to the left there for you know, I came out of his hand just a little early. There you see them trees in the right coming into play as Dan got a hold of them. As a, this is the second longest hole on the course. This was playing at 0.67 over par, so you can tell it has some teeth to it for sure. You see he gets up there a little to the right. See what he has from there. Here we go, Kirk's on the left side in the woods. Trying to make as much forward progress as he can with this long hole. Oh, great forehand out. Great progress up. I was looking on PDGA because like, I mean, I'm not from the Nashville area or even the Tennessee area so like Dan's name wasn't too familiar with me and I was like he played his first PDJ event 1997 I thought he had one of the lowest PDJ numbers in the field which is like I mean anytime you see a number that's just six digits now you feel like it's the lowest in the field <laughs> but uh I don't think he does well I think we got somebody coming up in round two that might be a little bit lower number. We see Dan trying to scramble out, out of this wood line on the right here. Not a lot of OB on this course. I mean, that's uh, kind of, I guess you could say, man-made. It's just you get off the fairways here, and it's and it's beat in. It's an older course, but they leave the they leave the little saplings in there that make it make it tough still. Yep, yep. You get off, it's it ain't easy with the it's the old of the courses. Like they're they're still making some teeth out there. Kirk had a good out shot there. It's like just circle two. Dan's got I think he's got sneaky power. He's been throwing them standstills and getting them down the fairway. Jeff slipping up here. At least he knows how to shape those discs, yeah. There we go. Great out. So you left yourself a window. Thinking. Hit the window. Great upshot.
Kirk with another look at it. She had a couple of these circle two looks already this round. There's three holes in here. Oof. Not leaving them short for sure. Giving them a chance. Just a little. Can you get that forward momentum that you, you want a little up out of his hand? Drawing metal again. It's like three holes in a row now. He's been right there for it. Great set. Great putt. Finish out the hole. Yeah, both fellas, you know, you have to commit to the uh, to commit to that circle two bid, knowing that if you miss it, you could have that long comeback here and to be able to just to have the mental faith and trust that you're going to make them is, is key. Uh, hole four, uh, it's a little bit of an open fairway. Um, just wanted to go something 323. So kind of straight little tails off to the right. There's a main tree in the middle that you're looking at and the basket is directly behind that so you can't see it, but uh, it, comes up really, it comes up on you pretty quick with the slope. Yeah, yeah, so you definitely don't want to go long because there is a slope behind it that runs off really quick, so. Definitely not for its roll, guys. Yep, so. It might get big, you know, keeping people from straight blasting at it to get the whole 323, so. It's really just this first gap. You can, if you can beat this first gap here. That was a little low out of my hand of what I was aiming for, but got down there. See if Jeff can make that correction on that. Oh, that was a great flight. As you can see, like you, you want to come in low, and uh, but then you got that you got the guardian tree like dead tree in the middle of the fairway to keep these low shots right here from scooting up there. Otherwise, it just drops off quick. Dan just tailed it off a little early or a little late there in the end. I mean, from the tee, those drives look really well, but as you could tell, I think Catch Cam only seen one of them be able to make it to the edge of the hill. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Thank you. What a great, like, thumber? Yeah, thumber. What we're looking at here, yeah. yeah hit straight on the back and got the perfect skip up there. Such a dangerous looking putt. Yeah. I'd say from where you're just landed to, to where the woods come back in at the bottom of the hill is probably a good Maybe 10 foot drop. Yeah. Elevation. One's the one you were, it definitely made you think about when you were going for that up shot. Anything on edge, like it's just, it's so beat in and such a well used course that uh, this ground is not going to keep anything. If it's moving, it's going to slide on down, roll away. And probably catch speed while it's rolling away. Yeah. That's. Uh, that was a good metal hit because that disc was going to be gone. I'm going to get the perfect framed up. Ooh, again. Just all over it. Drawing so much metal. Oh, and it went all the way to the bottom. And that's the dangers here. We've seen that last year, too. Great, babe, but you know how tough it is shooting that far uphill, so... Jeff with the cleanup. Yeah, I don't think the camera's doing it justice, but Dan's easily standing below the cage right now. From just from just this edge of the, the dirt there.
another par. Playing a pretty, pretty playing around here. So hole five is going to give us uh, it's going to give us a little bit of a, a break in distance here. We're finally getting under the 300 mark for the first time in the tournament. It's a uh, it can be a scary ace run because it slopes so far left of the basket. The whole hole is on a, is on that hillside that four kind of was on the ridge of, and everything's going to fall away. So if you are you know right of the basket you're, and you go wide left, you're easily getting outside circle one. This, I, I didn't think about this play here. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'll say with only playing the whole one time of practice round, this is one of the holes that I was a little unsure of what I was going to do off the tee box. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not a forehand player, but I might try it on this hole. It's kind of within my distance as we're seeing Jeff line one up, something that's going to skip into the hill. But uh, yeah, this angle of the of the camera, real like the trees right at the top of the hill, the saplings on off to your left, yeah, um, really make it like Tight. force a force a shot up there. So that's what makes you think about what you want to do. But I just turned it over trying to get around that first big oak there, and and it just never came back. And Kirk's trying there. Kirk's got his. Yeah, he got his to come back around. Yeah. Still, still gonna be a tough putt. Yeah, the tee shot makes it makes you look like you want to go over, like force it over left. But Dan tried the same thing as I did and got the same fortunate thing. We both found something. Else. I think well short on his upshot, but. So you barely got over the hill and now. Yeah, I got a little tricky upshot. Pat bend in here. What do you got there? It's a, a glitch. Shiny looking stamp on it. And Jeff threw like, you know, the perfect distance, but that just, like once you get left of that basket, it just drops away and and he, he gives it a run from outside circle one. Dan kind of in the same predicament, right around the edge maybe here. Again, here off the basket. It's like, I don't know, every hole so far? Yeah, who had metal draws. Thank you. Uh, keeping it clean, what a, that's a good putt, solid putt there to stay two under through five here and Five holes in, and we're just now getting under 300 on distance. This Cane Ridge advanced layout is quite the challenge, especially for round one of a tournament. Kirk with the birdie. Sitting here thinking about everybody scrambling for you. Kirk actually did have a great drive. Yeah. Probably 25 foot. Party put downhill towards it. All right, here we are at hole six. Um, you see it's about a 220 shot off the placement, shot off the tee. Um, I'm trying to just get up here, and then we're gonna make a dog leg to the right up the hill. Um, once you make the tee shot, you're, you're, it's a pick a gap to the basket. There's a backhand and a forehand, um, depending on how far you get on your shot. Um, it, it's definitely the birdies there, but uh, 
there's definitely them trees, you know, you can uh, definitely make a par, or make a mistake, and uh, take your bogey. But the placement shot off the tee is key. Yeah, you, you go too far long, uh, your gaps get narrower, you get less options. You know, if you're too far down the hill, you just got to cover more. Like the the further right you can get here off the tee, like Kirk's doing past that first row of trees, is really going to open it up for you. As you can see where his land, he's got two options off the to go. Very close to him. Definitely where you want to be, for sure. Yep. Great shots. Yep. This hole starts, uh, Jeff trying to take out the catch cam here. Funny enough, we uh, laughed about it. He said he was actually throwing at the catch cam. I mean, it seems like it would be like a common thing. <laughs> Try to stand in a good spot, but uh, you get that you get that great throw, and Jeff just throwing it. It came out of it at the top. It hit the canopy, so he's gonna be at the bottom of the hill. Dan, yeah, as you can see, and you get down there and you get in that thickest tough up shot, and even Jeff's here in the middle of the fairways, got a tough up shot to go. So it's really about placement off the tee, you, I mean, you want to find that perfect spot. We've seen a few of those come, like these, those forehands here, see if he can't get it dialed in, he's been turning them over, trying to hit that angle. Mm -hmm. I have perfect gap here, one tree to miss, and I hit it. But What's right? There ain't no tree there. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Kirk, he's going for the same gap that I just had. So we said he had a great drive for it, but it all comes about, you know, beating that tree, beating the gaps. But definitely done it to perfection. So I was saying, like, you're, we get into a hole, a stretch here, probably the next, uh, probably the next four holes, you know, players are feeling like they're must-get birdies. They're, um, they're kind of on the shorter side. something you can you're gonna lose strokes to the field with pars if you don't come out under by you know probably two or three out of the next four Need another metal hit here Dan birdie run I think it is No, this one has far. far yeah. Not short. These these putts are a little bit easier, Derek, if you were closer to the basket without hitting that tree. Yeah. As you can see here, the footing was... That's all I could think about on this one. It was four walls right up against that tree. Mm -hmm. Slope, uphill, yeah. yeah. You know, you're trying not to pull it to the right, step straddling out there like that. I mean, you were center, top of the cage, so you you had the alignment and the power, you know, just a little, a little too much power there, but you got the comeback, there you go. Like I said, par's not bad on this hole, but uh, six, seven, eight, nine, you definitely want to play the four of them you know, under par by at least two or three strokes against the field here to keep to keep momentum. Because once you, we get into the back, the back nine, we get a little bit longer again, a little bit more tougher, more blind shots again. Thank you. Kirk with the drop in birdie on our card. Battling back to even. So hell seven here. We got this uh, Cadillac that looks like it's uh, an ace. I think it's a Cadillac or a coupe. Yeah. Little little ace prize for you guys. Looks like it's seen better years, but yeah, pretty much 247 straight downhill. 
you got a backdrop to throw into uh as a catch cam i see no excuse that there shouldn't be aces on this hole yeah so hopefully you guys can deliver here because uh dinner sounding free dinner sounding good i know that yeah here, right? <laughs> and again look look at your little ace prize there that we put out there for you Definitely, uh, definitely just you start quick. the challenge of this hole would be the elevation change. You want to make sure you, you know, get your nose down and yeah, you turn at the basket. When you throw in these kind of shots, you're thinking like, I need to have my, my release, my shoulders like parallel to the ground or like, is there something? Yep. Just as you can see, I dip, dip my shoulder down to make sure that I'm, make sure I'm pointing down and get that nose down on the disc. Right with the angle of the hill. Perfect. Like I said, if it's not drawn metal, though, I don't think it. Yeah. For me. Nah. No fun at all. Ah, and Jeff just pulled on his just so. And it stayed behind the tree. One last chance for the, uh, for the car. One mountain man. So we had two get down there, two short. The creek isn't OB, I don't believe, so no, no danger down there. I think it was just casual. Um, yeah, so he'll be five. We'll straddle out on a standstill downhill throw. All right, and we got Kirk with his birdie look. That's a turkey. He's dropping it in. Got himself back under par now. Way to battle. I like pointing out some things here. So my disc was right in front of Jeff's, and I asked him, Hey, you want me to mark your disc? He said, if I'm looking at your putter, I'm not making it in the basket. <laughs> so that's something to think about. I think some people always get weird about some things. So be looking at the basket, trying to make your shot. Just getting caught up in, in distractions. Yeah. Not even no distractions. distractions. Yeah. Great birdie putt. There we go. Oh, Dan's got that old school nose up, little spin putt. Little man. snap, yeah. Yep. The little quick arm yep. thing there. He does it on his putt, he does it on his up shots. You can tell it's got that little nose up spin out of it. Coming into the basket here on hole eight, you can tell it's just uh, you know, a hyzer, righty hyzer. You're, you're kind of throwing around these first few trees. It's open, you got the slope pretty much uh, the MO for the uh, for this course here, everything. You're playing on hillsides everywhere. Um, at 244, again, I'm expecting some ace runs here. Definitely like to see it. I'd, I'd be thinking throw something. For me, I'd be maybe throwing like an understable fairway driver that just kind of holds. It wants to turn over, but it doesn't. Because if you dump too early or you hyzer out too soon, you're going to be well below the basket. It's not a bad spot to be over there. Up on the right. What do you got here? Um, I was going between uh, my truth and my five putter. Um, I ended up throwing my five. I'm a bad guy. Oh, yeah, my music wasn't playing here. Oh, goodness. I'm horrible with throwing ace runs. I'm I'm more of the 
I mean, the ace is a bad miss, right? Or yeah. the good miss. Excuse me, good Thank miss. You. Speaking of aces, though, I did forget to mention that Adam Howford aced hole seven, so at least we had one out there. I wonder if he uh, accepted the car, if he left it there for the next division to come through the club. <laughs> Maybe he picked it up after his hole 18. Ace and A tier. You have one of those yet? No. Well done. That's seeing that this just rode up flat, took the took the hill, came in flat on the edge. You know, it didn't slide or skip or nothing. Just drawing it up like the commentator has for right. Yeah. And in case of the late tree, he had a good line. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I like throwing fairways soft, like they're a mid range. I feel like I can get a better grip on that. Yeah, it just depends on the the way and the angle of the hills and stuff. Depends if I throw, you know, if it's my putter or my mid or my fairway or what I'm throwing. Because I can throw them all for the same distance. It just depends. Yeah. I'll feel it work. You know, a lot, or not just field work, but just rounds. Just play, know your bag, have options. Especially when you're, you know, when you're traveling to play a course like this, you haven't played it but once in a practice round, probably the day before or something. Step up there and throw what feels comfortable. Kirk again, long look for the, for the bird. Go downhill here. Ooh, draw on metal. Stay up. Okay. Damn, with the long circle, too. I know how it's all over that basket. I do like that putt. It's, I mean, it's consistent. He's yeah. hit metal every time. It'd be an awesome tool to have with that consistency. Jeff getting a birdie here. Me cleaning up for my bird. I just think the plastic is very premium. It's a high quality material. The way the disc feels in my hand. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. The quality is better than any other company out there. Again, just consistent plastic. It's something I can consistently trust on every single throw. There's so many discs to choose from, and I guarantee if you tried every disc in the lineup, you're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. It's extremely high quality. You can only say so much that they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. All right, well, we're gonna head into uh, hole nine here, and uh, I was looking at the radar. I know we're gonna be getting wet going into the back nine, but before we get there, this is a uphill. Again, I'm begging you guys, let's get some good looking ace runs. Shortest hole on the course coming at 192, but it is definitely not easy. It is a steep uphill lie. And even if you're circle one, you could still be below the basket or standing above the basket. It's a... Uh, for 192, it has its challenges around the green. Yeah, that one main tree there in the middle really makes you decide what you're gonna do. And I think on the right side, that's the one tree you wanna miss on the hyzer. And out of money, and I called it, I knew it. So I ever see it, Jeff makes a good correction on that. Just didn't come left like he probably was expecting it to. He's maybe ran around Servo's edge, but it gets thick over there. You know, I think he, I'm pretty sure he made it up to pin high too. Yeah. So this is if you're forehand. I think if you feel like the forehand is your more dominant thing, I think this is the shot if you're comfortable with it because it is a little more open there. No, Kirk, he's got a nice little armadillo here too. Oh, what a, oh, it looks so good out of the hand. It did. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw you into the tree there, but it looked really good off the tee. And for the hill, like, for the slope that the basket's on, you guys are pretty much almost eye level with the basket. Yeah. Yeah. 
throw something straight as we see Dan get kicked out to the right. Probably pen high almost. It's tough. Great bid. Yeah, but yeah. One of them you're looking at and just so far at Bill. Not yeah. wanting to roll back down the hill either. So last year, if you want to go see the coverage, I think Jeff Jeff had a great throw in from down there, down below the basket on this hole to get us going into the back nine. Get up there, get up there, get up there. But I've been four in a row. Yeah, that's so, what I mean. That was a good bid too. It looked good. I was staying behind. Four in a row on these four holes, like, you know, he's, that's where you want to get him. You need to get him through here. And he played a three under, so that's good. Yeah, it's getting strokes on the field for sure. Jeff with a great birdie putt. I didn't realize, I, I wasn't there when you guys were putting out. I didn't realize he had a window there. Yeah, off the tee, he wasn't too excited about it. And then when he got up there, he seen he had a much clearer putt than what he was thinking. Hole nine played, it played as the easiest hole on the day. Nobody double bugging it. Well, that, there we go. We, uh, we're through nine. Dan, uh, Dan's hanging in there in spirit. You know, he, he never seemed like he really got down about it. You got a four under round going. We got a couple ones. Looking at the leaderboard, Albert uh, Kubin, I'm hoping I'm saying it right, six under. And then Tyler and you and Jeff are uh, right on his heels there. It's a really tight leaderboard. Four stroke separation from from Albert to Brian, which is in a tie for seventh. Check us out for the back nine. <laughs>